Hey guys, Fezzi here and welcome back to another Hytale news video. If you're new here, we recap what's going on throughout the whole entire day in Hytale. So if you guys would want to keep up to date with the latest possible Hytale news, then subscribe right now with those notifications on. We've got a lot to talk about today, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Before we get started, we want to give a huge shout out to our Hytale community server and website, HighForge. It is an up and coming Hytale server with an amazing team of developers and builders. Did you know we are already planning game modes for our server? Learn more about kingdoms and other game modes by hopping on the website now at highforge.com. Come join us and interact with the community. We are always on there hanging out with you guys, so come and enjoy, and now back to the news. It's that time of the week again. It's Friday and Hytale has treated us with a brand new blog post. This week's blog post is titled Key Art Showcase, so let's hop into it. Hytale team first starts off by saying, in this post we're going to be taking a closer look at three pieces of Hytale key art, the kind of thing you might find used for posters or wallpapers. Artist Thomas Zale Frick created each of these images to express the personality of locations and characters that you'll encounter as you play through Hytale's adventure mode. Below you'll find time-lapse videos depicting the creation of each piece, and they also feature ambient music by Hytale's composer Oscar Garvin. Here's the first time-lapse, take a look. I'm pretty happy with this one because it looks close to what we have in game, Thomas says. I try to find interesting color palettes in order to create something with a nice atmosphere. Here, it's a lot of green, dark blue, and bright blue with a touch of brown. It's a foggy environment because it's a swamp. When I draw an environment like this, it helps with building weather. We try to reproduce the same effect for in-game landscape. I often add some architecture. Here we have a Quebec tree, which will help the world team to build prefabs, Thomas says. They can use this for inspiration. They won't do the exact thing that I do, but they'll think about how they might create it with blocks. There's a magical feel, but it's still a little dark. Thomas continues, I really like the combination of cute and scary. The monster here is a nice example of that, because he looks a bit scary, but he's cute and fun too. It's a balance that is not always easy to reach. Here's what Thomas had to say, Usually I try not to block myself into staying in a cubic style of sketching, Thomas says. I start with a normal sketch. On this one, you can see that I started by putting down a big flat area of color. I'm usually not too worried about which materials will exist in the game, but I still keep in mind the sand will become a block, the stone will become a certain type of stone, the sky will become a weather asset. I keep that in the back of my mind. The same is true for plants and other things that are covering the ground. I don't want a typical desert, Thomas continues, with a bright blue sky like the picture we all have in our minds. I wanted to work on the dark, hot desert aspect, and I wanted a threat. There are two things here that are threatening the player. You have big clouds, like a sandstorm is coming, and you have a tower. I initially thought it might be a dungeon, but in the final version it became a Skarak nest. I could have included a crew, but I placed a player alone, Thomas says. I like that because it creates the feeling of loneliness and exploration. Like if you're discovering untouched lands. I really like this kind of stuff. It's not about the character, it's about his loneliness in this landscape. Our next time lapse is Viren. Take a look. Here's what Thomas had to say behind Viren. This one was a lot of work because it's a very important character, Thomas says. In the video, you can see that I've started over many times and it was very messy. I had no process on this one in the beginning. I was painting layers over layers and trying to find something interesting. Eventually, I found a nice outline and started to define the details. I wanted the character to look a bit like a demon and not exactly humanoid, Thomas says. I wanted to give him a spectral aspect, a little bit ethereal. He's not from Orbis, so he must look different to the other characters we have in the game. We also had to define a key color for him. The green of his skin and the diamond shape of his eye is very representative of Viren and his minions. The orb he has in his hand represents void magic, Thomas says. In the beginning, I thought that might be green too, but for the need of this comparison, I ended up picking a purple-pink color, which represents corruption in the world. Most of the time, Viren is a distant threat. The magic in his hand represents his power. All of his focus is on this spell. With the quick blog post aside, our next news for the day is Hytale is officially a game category on Twitch. This could hint at the release being near. Here's a quick picture for you all. 
As you can see, there is no image yet, but the category is marked as RPG Action and Puzzle. Feel free to hop on the Hytale category now at www.twitch.tv slash directory slash game slash Hytale. But guys, this is all we've got for today's Hytale news for February 2nd. The blog post was super interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed. But let me know how you guys enjoyed today's video as well. Subscribe if you guys are new around here for non-clickbait Hytale news videos. We strive to keep you guys up to date regarding Hytale, so make sure to tune in to never miss anything we talk about. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at HighForge, as well as join our Discord. We've been itching to interact with the community more, so now is your perfect time to join in. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching everyone, and we'll see you all for the next one. Signing off, Fezzy the Frog.